E-Pain Meniscus Tear Diagnosis The patient will come to you with a history of a twisting injury and pain around the knee. The patient may give you a history of mechanical symptoms such as locking, clicking, or some swelling. You examine the patient and you'll find there is a joint line tenderness, maybe some effusion, and McMary test may be positive. Painful click is obtained at the knee is brought from flexion to extension with internal or external rotation. This test will also help you to differentiate if the meniscus tear is in the medial side or is it in the lateral side. So you're going to start treating the patient and you'll give the patient non medications, physiotherapy, injection, and if there is no improvement, you will try to get an MRI. You will get the MRI early if you have a locked knee means you don't have full extension of the knee or if there's blood in the knee so when you aspirate the knee because there is an effusion you get blood and you suspect ACL tear you get the MRI. In this situation you will suspect a lateral meniscal tear. It is usually a vertical tear of the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus and it is the most commonly missed tear on an MRI. I will hope you get an x-ray first before you get the MRI to check if there is a fracture, if there is arthritis or any other problems in the knee. So why do you get the MRI? Because the clinical diagnosis accuracy is about 70%. And because there are other issues in the knee that can give you the same symptoms like a meniscal tear. These things can be intraarticular inside the joint or extraarticular outside the joint. And the symptoms will mimic a meniscal tear. So we get the MRI. And the MRI is the most sensitive test. You need to know this fact that the lateral meniscus have twice the excursion of the medial meniscus. That's why the medial meniscal tear is three times the lateral meniscus. So look for a tear of the medial meniscus because it is more common than the lateral meniscus. And also the lateral meniscus will have most of the meniscal cysts. On an MRI, how do you know which is the lateral meniscus? Check the position of the fibula. The lateral meniscus is on the same side as the fibula. Also, note that the fibula is posterior. The MRI is the best study to diagnose or to confirm meniscal pathology. What do you see in the MRI? A normal meniscus will be dark. So let's see how we make these cuts in the MRI of the meniscus. Here is a section in the meniscus and you can see it goes from peripheral to central and how the shape of the meniscus in the MRI will be. And when you see there is a high signal extend to the joint surface of the meniscus, then that is grade 3 tear. If you have an MRI and no meniscal pathology, you probably don't have a tear. However, there might be some false positives that really are not a tear, but looks like or it mimics a tear. This is a normal meniscus and this is grade 1. And in grade 1, you see globular intrasubstance signal. This increased signal intensity is within the meniscus, but it doesn't extend to the surface of the meniscus. In grade 2, you will have a linear 
area of increased signal intensity, it is inside the meniscus and it does not go to the surface of the meniscus. And in grade 3, you can see that the tear extends to the articular surface. Then what are the MRI signs of meniscal tear? It will be grade 3 signal extend to the surface of the meniscus, among other things. So give me an example of the grade 3 signal. Grade 3 tears may be horizontal, vertical, radial, oblique, or complex. Could be degenerative, and it may have a displaced or a missing fragment. It can be in different forms and types. But there are few important things in the MRI worth mentioning. This material frequently comes on examinations. The first one is the double PCL sign, which is the bucket handle tear of the medial meniscus. It is seen on the sagittal MRI when a torn meniscus fragment is flipped and displaced into the notch. It's 100% specific for a flipped bucket handle medial meniscal tear. On the other hand, a bucket handle tear of the lateral meniscus, where the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus flips anteriorly, you see a double anterior horn sign. What are the false positives in the MRI? There is a ligament called the anterior transverse meniscal ligament, which attaches to the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus, and this one mimics meniscal tear. There is also a meniscofemoral ligament attaches to the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus, and this one also mimics meniscal tear. It is the Humphrey or the Risberg ligament. Also, if you have a fluid tracking into the sheath of the popliteal tendon, it will mimic posterior horn lateral meniscus tear. Discoid meniscus. It's common in the lateral meniscus. We shall may have a history of clicking and locking or a history of lack of full knee extension. The patient will have more than two bow ties, and the meniscus will extend beyond the halfway point of the condyle. Parameniscal cysts. If you see it, you could have a meniscal tear, especially with lateral meniscus, horizontal tear. And for this one, you will do a partial meniscectomy and decompression of the cyst. The differential diagnosis is ganglion cyst and bursitis. How about Baker cyst? You could have combination of meniscal tear and Baker cyst. Baker cyst does not mean you have a meniscal tear. It can happen from any intraarticular pathology. But if you have a meniscal tear, arthroscopy and debridement of the meniscus will definitely help the cyst. Thank you very much. I hope I was helpful to you.